Amen. To God we give the glory. Turn with me. Let's go back to Matthew chapter number 10. And I want you to find in your reading uh, verse 5. We're going to read today verses 5, 6, 7, and 8. And um, we're going to be in the whole context uh, all the way to verse 15. Uh, but we're really going to concentrate on these verses as we continue our series concerning our vision. Are you there? It's on the screen. It says this. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles. Y'all see that? And enter no town of the Samaritans. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse the leapers, or as we can say it, lepers. Cast out demons. You received without payment? Give without payment. Look at your, your neighbor, direct in the face, in the eye. And I want you to simply say one word to him. Instructions. In instructions. The vision statement is what? Real. So let's go again. Let's see if you remember what they are. We're going to put it up, but it's going to come a time and a place where we ain't going to put it up, and I expect you to know it. Amen? The R is what? Reach lost souls. The E is what? Empower all souls through biblical teaching. The A, advance the kingdom of God. L, live as disciples of Jesus Christ. And of course, this first quarter, we're dealing with what? reach lost souls, how are we affecting people, how are we influencing people, how are we connecting to people who are not disciples of Christ but have the potential to be so. And what we're learning today is, Sister Hale, there are instructions we must follow. For some reason, for some reason, we don't like instructions. Amen. <laughs> Dean Cam, we don't, we don't like instruction. If you put on a screen, I, I got a screen, it's an electric Jeep. Uh, of course, I know that some of you have uh, probably bought one of these Jeeps. Uh, if you're a parent or grandparent, and, and uh, for your child, your grandchild, or children, or grandchildren. And uh, it looks pretty simple because when you go to Walmart or any other store, Tours R Us, they're normally put together on a display. But when you buy them in the box, you will soon discover the wheel's not on it, the battery's not in, the, the steering column's not attached, the other accessories are not attached, the stickers are not on it. Now, if you like me, what I would do is I would take the shell of the, this car, put it in my living room, spread out everything, and look at the box. <laughs> because I know, <laughs> I know how to put the wheels on, I know the steering column and, and the seats and all and the stickers, you know. But, but I, I, I don't read the instructions because it takes time. That's right, Pastor. It takes time to read the instructions. But after going through everything, Devon, I, I, I figure out and discover that it actually took me longer trying to look at an image and it probably would have took me a shorter time if I just took the time, take the instructions, and read it and know what screw goes where, what accessory goes where. But you know, we just don't like to follow instructions. It's the same, Richard, as reaching lost souls. We cannot afford to look at the image of the way it's always been done in the church and assume this is how it should be done because maybe just maybe as a possibility we have been doing it wrong one must wonder what is really going on I mean 
all of these churches, Lamont, all these churches, on all of these corners, with all these Christians inside of these churches, on all of these corners, and the same mess proceeds as normal. Okay, all these Christians and all these churches and all these corners, and it seems as if all these churches with all these Christians on all these corners don't have no power. Could it be an instruction issue? Y'all know the text. Jesus has called his disciples to himself. And he's now given them, this is what the text says, instructions to follow. Instruction number one, write this down. He tells them where to start. He tells them where to start. Now when you look at this text, you also can zoom in on the fact that Jesus begins the details concerning where to start by first pointing out where not to start. Come closer. Chris, he says, I like that Carolina blue. Where them boys did it. Amen. Let's go back to the sermon. Um, he says, go nowhere among whom? The Gentiles. And enter where? No town among the who? Samaritans. Now, what does this mean? Gentile means nations. It's a nation of people who were not Jewish. They didn't understand the Jewish way of life and they did not understand or were not familiar with the God of the Jews. Okay? Samaritans were immigrants. They may have even been illegal immigrants who were foreign to Jewish culture. They did not know not only the culture, they did not, they only, you know, they, they came in as half-breeds because they had what's called intermarriages. But they did not know, here it is, the God. They were not familiar with the God of Israel. Okay? So what you saying, Pastor? Simply put, at this time, according to Matthew's Gospel, the Gentile Samaritans were outsiders. No relationship to God, nor the Jewish way of life. I'm going slow because I need you to catch it. Of course, for those of you who are Bible scholars, understand that the Gentiles and the Samaritans at the death and resurrection of Jesus are now invited in. That's why anybody can come to Jesus for themselves. Okay, it's not just an Israel type of way of life or Bible. Anybody can come. But at this time and place, everybody say at this time and place. At this time and place of the gospel, they are outsiders. No relationship. They don't know the God of the Jews. Catch this, Devon, Jesus says, I'm sending you to lost souls, but do not start with people that appear, or it's quite obvious that they are outsiders and have no relationship with God. He says, don't start with folk who we think are the ones who need God. But rather, go, here it is, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Lost in this text means being in danger of losing eternal salvation. Sheep mean, he didn't say wolf, he said sheep. They are a part of the fold. And then he says house, which means 
descendants. They grew up around the God of Israel. Israel is where this text, this gospel, this Bible, this word, it came through Israel. So that's why you can't throw away the Old Testament because you don't understand the God of the Old Testament. And if you don't understand the Old Testament, you would not understand Jesus' purpose in the New Testament to reveal the God of the Old Testament. So New Testament is built upon what? The Old Testament. Are right, y'all listening to what I'm saying? So what is he saying? He says, I want you to go to the people who are descendants of mine in the family but who are in danger of losing their salvation. <laughs> yeah, here it is. Jesus said, don't begin going out there with your Holy Ghost self, reaching people who appear to be lost. But I need y'all to begin uh, with folk who do not appear to be lost. Folk who preach, folk who sing on the choir, folk who uh, know their favorite seat, folk who know how to sit, how to stand, uh, folk who knows the tradition of the church, folk who are not familiar, folk who got the Bible on their living room table with the plastic still on it, folk who knows God, I need you to start with them because believe it or not, they are in the house, but they're lost. Uh, uh, we talked about this yesterday at the ministers. We spend so much time trying to do what? Trying to craft outreach teams. But Jesus here in Matthew's gospel is urging us to spend as much time concentrating on inreach teams. Amen. Come here, come here, come here, look close. There are people who are familiar with God. They're in the church house. But they're lost. Lost sheep. Write this down. Lost sheep uh, in the house uh, are those who, uh, Bishop, who, who hear but don't believe. Chad, who listens but don't repent. Who, who, who comes to church but don't come to Christ. And here's the mindset, Carmen. As long as I come to church, I'm going to make it in. As long as I show up sometimes to the preaching and sometimes to the Bible study, I make it sometimes to Sunday school, a.k.a. faith formation. I'm going to make it in. If I just listen sometimes, or if I, I know what they're going to say, I know what the Bible is. My mom, my grandma brought me to the church when I was a little boy. I was baptized at the age of four. And I ain't been to church. I ain't followed Christ. But when I die, I want to be right here. And I expect the church to give me up my family a chicken dinner. <laughs> and sometimes they ain't, these ain't the ones who are unchurched. It's the ones who are church. Jesus said, let me break it down in our language and make it trans transformational and 21st century. He says, don't go to folk who are unchurched. Preach, man. But I want you to start with folk who are churched. They so churched, they ain't no earthly good. Why start in the house and not out there? Come close. It's going to get deeper. Please come close. Because out there, Chris, it's easy. Err. To pretend to be something that we're not. To be impressive because we finally came to church today. To be super holy, to take on an appearance that we are good and we have a form of godliness. But in the house, come closer, we are familiar with each other. <laughs> we're part of the same family 
we listen to the same thing. We speak the same language. Yeah, 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 yeah. We are known. We have seen each other's scars. And if anything, we hide what, what is very little because we are the first one to tell our business. Here it is. So starting in the house pulls us to the uncomfortable place to be authentic. <laughs> the true struggle, Dennis, in the house is not if we like each other. No, that's superficial. But are we authentic enough to be truthful to one another and not get offended? Maybe that's why the Lord said we don't need no visitors this morning. We just need house folk. I ain't going to say the other one. House folk. Maybe that's why the Lord sent the storm this morning in the form of fake ice to see who was going to really come. And I know a lot of y'all watching. Hey, I know y'all watching online, but, but I need you to catch this. Watch this. Maybe the Lord said, you don't need no visitors this morning. We need to talk to the house. Can I trust you, David, to tell me the truth? Don't, don't, don't talk about me. Don't, don't, don't hate on me. Uh, uh, don't stop speaking to me. Don't catch an attitude with me. Don't hold a grudge against me. But can I trust you to tell me the truth? Not what you heard, not, 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 not what you assume, but what you know and what you see. Look at your name, tell him, tell me the truth. Don't touch him, it's flu season, don't touch him. Yeah, y'all pray for my baby boy, he has the flu, and uh, pray for him, but he's getting better. But, but tell the truth, it matters, it matters not how long we've been in the church. If I'm lost, I need you to tell me the truth. We should be able to tell the tree by the fruit it bears. Don't get it twisted because I look cute in my black suit. You need to be at a place now where you can discern my heart. And if you know my heart is crooked, you ought to be there telling me the truth. Don't go along with me time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, you are guilty by association. <laughs> and that's why some of us look suspect up in here. Because to be in the house means we got to be authentic. We know too much about each other. To not be. <laughs> Raise your hand if you want to be where Jesus is. Do you want to be there by yourself? No, we need to be there as a body. So what? Who am I trying to go out there and get folk who don't know the Lord, but too scared to tell folk who's supposed to know the Lord how to walk when they're crooked? If we cannot be effective by telling the truth in the house, then we will be labeled hypocritical and have no effect in the streets. You, want, you know why they ain't coming up in here? Because we hypocritical. Why in the world, why in the world am I going to go up in there and put on a front like all of them, I'm going to stay out here and chill because I know how you act at the job. No, you got some folk in your house that know how you act. And that's why they ain't come to church with you because they finally get a break from you. <laughs> Let me say it this way. Let me say it this way. Put this on the screen. We cannot bring lost in and expect change if we ignore the lost that's within and not effect change. Write that down. Write that down. You, you can put it on Facebook too. Just You didn't get it. You just get the credit what credit do. Amen. We cannot bring the lost in and expect what? If we ignore what? 
the loss that's within and not affect change. So he says, this is where you start. Whew. Here's instruction number two and we're going home. He tells us what to say. What to say? He says, here it is. He says, proclaim the good news. What's the good news? The kingdom of heaven has come near. Here's the question. What are we proclaiming, Doris, in the house? <laughs> uh, let that soak in. Uh, we are not to speak from our own personal remarks. We must be very careful how we talk to each other. Because life and death is in the tongue. Let me say it like this. You have the proclivity, and I have the proclivity as well, we all do, to be so nice to folk who we really don't know. We're trying to infuse a climate in this place that when folk come in uh, who are a guest, welcome to Mount Calvary, good to see you. We're trying to have a climate that makes them want to come back because they're treated like a king or a queen. And we'll treat them so nice. How you doing? Welcome to Mount Calvary, good to see you. Anything you need me to do, you just ask anything. Hallelujah, bless the name of Jesus. And then we'll turn right around to folk who we are familiar with and they ask us to do something, you better get it your own self, shoot, I'm tired. We have the proclivity to talk to folk we know any kind of way. And we don't talk to each other in here the right way. Look at somebody say I'm sorry, don't touch me and say I'm sorry. Cause we don't talk to one another the right way. We got to be careful how we speak to each other. Let the truth be known, we treat one another wrong. Somebody you don't know, oh yes, go ahead. You can have that seat. God bless you. I know you. Audrey, move over. Move over, Audrey. Dang, move over. That's what we do. And you don't know what people had to go through to get here this morning. Especially this morning. Because I know y'all was waiting on that text and y'all was praying, Lord. Oh, Jesus. And then, and then when that text came through and said regular time, y'all said, regular time? Don't he know it's cold, it's rainy, it's ice? <laughs> Y'all don't think I know you, do you? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, see, y'all, y'all just been released now, hey? You're like, whoosh. I was carrying that burden in here. <laughs> but when we speak, what we're saying? Watch this. If it's not good news, then what are we speaking and why are we speaking it? If it's not to edify one another, what are we speaking it and why are we speaking it? I should be here to build you up. What good to put a front on unchurched folk when we can't be real with the church? Could you imagine if we all are on one accord, you said this yesterday, could you imagine how much power we would have if all of us were just authentic and know how to talk to one another? Do you know how much power would be in this house? We must speak with the authority of Christ. The authority of Christ, only the authority of Christ has the power to change the outcome. Please note, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are interchangeable, which means kingdom means what? Rule of God. 
So when Matthew, and normally it'd be only Matthew's gospel, you'll hear or you'll see kingdom of heaven. When Matthew uses kingdom of heaven, he is simply speaking in terms of God's reign, God's rule over the evil forces of this world. So what is causing those, here it is, who's in the house to hear but not believe, to listen but not repent, to come to church and not come to Christ. And look, don't you look at don't you look at your role. Everybody look at yourself. Okay, everybody look at look at ourselves. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. What's causing the imbalance, Brian? What what's causing the disconnect? Uh, come closer. It's disobedience in the form of an evil force. He says it's not their last name. It's not. Uh, where they come from. It's not because of who their daddy or mother is. It's not because that. It's something inside of them. You remember, our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against what? Against the, the bad angels. Y'all got it? And so watch this. He says, what's causing the imbalance is that folk are sick. Don't get it twisted concerning this flu thing. Don't, 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 don't. This ain't your typical flu. This, this, this flu killing folk. It got folk paralyzed. Don't you get it twisted about the plague in this land. Don't you get it twisted. It's the enemy because we're so disobedient. He's allowing him to, to throw out what? Flu everywhere. Don't you think it's just the echo? Doc, am I telling you? I mean, even the flu shot is not working. Why? Because he says it takes more than a flu shot. It's going to take the authority of Christ to shut some stuff down. <laughs> Folk are dead. They're just existing. Folk are infected. Folk have demons in them. And only the authority in the house singing Singing holy, 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 and it's got demons in them. <laughs> Only the authority of Christ, what we speak, the kingdom of heaven, being at hand. Only what we speak, the words, good news, the kingdom is at hand. Only the kingdom can cure people, raise people cleanse people and cast out demons that's why we got to be very careful how we speak to one another because you don't know if I'm on the verge of being sane or insane you don't know what I had to deal with you got to be careful how you deal with us be careful be careful you don't know I may listen I may have been up with a gun beside my head and I said if I go to church this morning if I don't hear nothing good I'm coming back home and kill myself you don't know who we dealing with and you worrying about who got your seat Thank you. Oh, but watch this I'm gonna close this is good stuff watch this here it is here, put this question up um, what happens if people in the house won't listen. Wow. <laughs> because I know somebody's saying, well, Pastor, I'm with you. I've told some people, I had to cut off some people. I, I've told some people about what they've done, I, and they told me too, but, but, but I, I, I've talked to them, but, but Pastor, they won't listen. Okay. Write this down. We ain't gonna, we ain't gonna talk about verses 9 through 13, but 9 through 13 is dealing with basically traveling missionaries because when he sent them out they was traveling missionaries so if you want to be a traveling missionary this is you you don't depend on anything else but God that's what it's basically saying and it's talking about Christian hospitality that I'm going to send you places that I'm going to allow you to meet Christians even in native land or foreign territory and they're going to show hospitality but then you got the, the, the text switches back now at verse 14 put verse 14 up that's what it says verse 14 Chapter 10 says what? Put that up for me. You're talking about shaking off the dust, isn't it? This is what it says. It was customary that a Palestinian Jew, there it is, a Palestinian Jew, I'm not going to read it, I want you to see it, a Palestinian Jew that was going to a foreign pagan land it was customary, Bishop, that when that Palestinian Jew came back to
into the Holy Land, before entering the Holy Land, the Palestinian Jew was supposed to what? Shake off the dust and not carry it back to the Holy Land. That's how you treated pagans who did not want to hear. Watch this. If anyone would not welcome you or hear this, listen to your words. What's the words? What's the words? Good news. Kingdom of heaven is at hand. Shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. What are you saying? He's saying that what I'm doing is I'm treating Israel not outsiders. I'm treating Israel like they, I would treat a pagan country. What you mean, Pastor? Don't allow lost people in the house to victimize you. Folk who don't want to change will victimize you. They will talk you into something that you don't even agree with on your worst day. Don't you allow yourself to be bamboozled, Dennis, by folk who listen to the word of God and will not change. What you mean, Pastor? You and I cannot fix people. Okay, even John the Baptist saw this. Go, go, go quickly to Mark, no, Matthew 3. Matthew chapter 3, uh, verse 7. Matthew chapter 3, verse 7. I got to say this. I know my time has faded, but I got to say this. You got to, you got to, because I need, I need y'all to stop holding hands with folk who ain't going to change. Okay? I told you, as you find, as you find in your Bible, or in your Bible, Matthew uh, 3 and 7, you got to understand that every time you pop a bag of popcorn, I said this years ago, every time you pop a bag of popcorn, there's always some stubborn kernels that will not pop. Now, if you keep on trying to pop that bag, you're going to burn up the whole group trying to get those jokers to pop, and they still ain't going to pop. This is what John the Baptist says. Watch this. Look what he said. He says, but when he saw many Pharisees, said, who are they? They are in the house. They knew the Torah. They read the Torah. They were raised. They were descendants. Coming for baptism, he said to them, you brought the vipers. You trying to come to be baptized knowing you ain't going to change. Water is not going to change you. And that's what's wrong with so many people in the house. We thought baptism was going to change us instead of a lifestyle. You brought the vipers who warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Go to verse 8. Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do, you, do, do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestors. What is he saying? I've been a member of Matt Carey for all these years. Don't you assume. Oh, I know. You ain't my pastor, Reverend Ray, but my pastor. I told you, that's why he didn't bring no guests up in here today. Don't you assume because your great-great-grandmama was the first one to pay a dollar to have a brick laid. Don't you assume. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up. To raise up what? Go to verse 10. To raise up. Verse 10. What? Do not pursue that. Even now the axe is what? Lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Let me say this. And let me put everybody on notice. If you following Raper or Little John, you're going to bust hell wide open. You better follow Jesus. Raper or Little John don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. somebody say shake it he ain't talking about outsiders unchurched folk he talking about church folk who always try to pull you into a corner and tell you a bunch of lies like a brawl of vipers shake it tell somebody we're going beyond familiar <laughs> this is the day the Lord has made Watch 
this, watch this, watch, watch, watch this, watch this. You can't fix them. Go, go, go back. Go back to Matthew 10, verse 15. You, you can't fix them. He, all he said was, you shake the dust. Shake it off. That don't mean be mean to them. That, that don't mean treat them bad. That, that just mean you can't deal with them like that no more. Because listen, you can't walk with somebody that you don't agree with. We don't have buddies in the body. We are disciples in the body. That's the problem. We got too many buddies and we don't want to be disciples. Oh, I'm so glad that no visitors come today. Watch this. If they don't want to listen to your words, which is God's words, not your personal words, truly I tell you, it would be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. I want to go where Jesus is. Listen, if you want to go where Jesus is, it better be more than a song. I didn't say it. The word I said. So don't you get so cocked about going to see unchurched folk. Look among you. Look down your road. <laughs> Woo! And tell somebody, I don't want you to go to hell. No, I want you to say it like you mean. Don't play with this thing. So I don't, I don't want to go to hell, and I don't want you to go to hell. So the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I got good news to tell you. Don't worry about the kind of crazy stuff, but put your eyes on the Christ. Do what you need to do. Examine yourself. Live to the fullness of God and let God take care of the rest. Father, we thank you. We thank you for a house meeting this morning. You knew what you was doing. You didn't send no visitors here this morning. Because visitors didn't need to hear this. The house need to hear this. Thank you, God. That we don't follow a man. A man, God, who's not perfect. We follow a God who is creator. We believe in a Jesus who gives us access to that God. God, I thank you for the Holy Spirit that walks with us and comforts us, corrects us, guides us. God, I pray for the lost sheep of the house. Ones that don't have guidance. Ones that's missing direction. I pray for all of us. Because somewhere in that category, you are not in control of every fragment of our lives. God, we just want to get better. We want to be what you have called us to be. Help us to start in the house. Help us to start reaching in the house. Help us to know how to speak to one another. To be kind for, to each other. Not to take one another for granted. And if we got an issue, let us be man or woman enough to come to each other in the spirit of God. And let's correct it and move forward. Because we have a greater work to do. There's so many people out there, God, who's unchurched, who needs you. And you have designated us as instruments to show them the light. God, I thank you. I thank you for the family of God here at Mount Calvary. <laughs> I thank you for a courageous conversation. I thank you that we can be authentic and real and we can talk to one another. But God, we need more of that. God, we need a refreshing in here. We need to always be on guard. We need to always be challenged in our belief and in our repentance and in our coming to you to be your disciple. Thank you. Thank you for everyone here. And thank you, God, for this house meeting. Thank you for the boldness, God, of words that's been spoken. It's the truth. And the truth is the only thing 
that can set us free. Lord, we are thine, oh Lord. We are yours. And we ask you, Lord, to be with us today. We ask you to cover us as we leave this place. Give us a fresh anointing, a right spirit, new direction. Help us to let go of some stuff. And if certain people don't listen to your word, don't allow that person to drain us, but learn how to disconnect. Shake the dust and turn them over into your hand. In Jesus' name, tell somebody I love you.